In 2015, a Republican U.S. presidential candidate named Jeb Bush made a little statement that caused an outrage across the psychology community and across the country in general. Here's what he said. Universities ought to have skin in the game. When a student shows up, they ought to say, hey, that psych major deal, that philosophy major thing, that's great, it's important to have liberal arts, but realize you're going to be working in a Chick-fil-A. A Chick-fil-A? Uh, yeah. So in response, as you can imagine, thousands of people took to social media and other platforms to express their disagreement and show the fantastic variety of ways that they've applied their psychology degrees. Want some examples? Just search out the hashtag ThisPsychMajor on Twitter. So to address issues like the one reflected in Jeb Bush's statement, Dr. Stacy Spencer wrote an article for Ion Psychi Magazine about developing pride of ownership of your psychology degree. This is an article that I think all students should read if they're thinking about, or if they already are, pursuing a bachelor's degree in psychology. In the article, Dr. Spencer describes three misunderstandings about obtaining a psychology degree, and then she provides 10 specific strategies to help you develop pride of ownership of your degree. The final line of that article, it says something that I've remembered ever since. Here's the exact wording. When someone asks, what will you do with your degree? Or one day asks, what psychology has to do with your job? I hope you say, oh my, where do I begin? Hi, this is Bradley, and you're listening to the Psych Everywhere podcast. For this episode, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome guest speaker Dr. Stacy Spencer, who is going to talk to you about the many reasons that you should choose a psychology major. That presentation starts right now. My name is Stacy Spencer, and in this podcast, I'm going to answer the question, why major in psychology? I have three great reasons for you. The first reason to major in psychology is because psychology is fascinating. I doubt you'd be listening to this podcast if you didn't have an interest in understanding why people feel, act, and think the way they do. You and I might be interested in different topics in psychology, but I'm guessing we can agree that learning about emotions, behaviors, and mental processes is fascinating. My second reason for majoring in psychology is because psychology is everywhere. I'm not saying that because the name of this podcast series is Psych Everywhere. I'm saying it because it's true. Psychology really is everywhere. Psychology is in education, business, law, public policy, healthcare, engineering, transportation, marketing, sports, the arts, literature, television, music, recreation, video gaming. I mean, I could keep going on and on, but I think you probably get the point. Psychology is in our relationships, our hobbies, our aspirations. Psychology is even in the device you're using to listen to this podcast. My third reason for majoring in psychology is because psychology provides the knowledge and skills employers value. What? Yes. Now the truth is many employers might not realize that majoring in psychology provides the knowledge and skills they value, but it does. You've probably heard or been told that you can't do anything with a bachelor's degree in psychology. I've even heard a psychology professor tell students that. Actually, what the professor said was, if you don't plan to go to graduate school, you might as well practice saying, do you want fries with that? By the time this podcast ends, you'll understand why that is not true. You'll know that there are many interesting job opportunities for a person with a bachelor's degree in psychology, and you'll know how to find those jobs. Before I elaborate on how awesome psychology is, where psychology is, and the knowledge and skills psychology majors have that employers value, I'm gonna give you a chance to pause me so you can set yourself up to be able to write down or bookmark the websites I'm gonna mention along the way. Now, if you're driving while listening, 
Please don't try to write these things down. Okay, so here we go. So let's start with the first reason to major in psychology. Psychology is fascinating. I want to make sure we're defining psychology the same way. Many people have a very narrow view of psychology. Many people think psychology is about mental illness and assume that if you major in psychology, you must want to become a psychologist. I mean, that's where that statement, you can't do anything with a bachelor's degree in psychology actually comes from. Because the truth is most mental health professions require graduate education. But psychology is so much more than mental illness. Psychology is defined as the scientific study of behavior in the mind. Note that psychology is not defined as the scientific study of mental illness. Nope, psychology is the scientific study of behavior and the mind. The scientific part of the definition is very important. To understand behavior and the mind, a person needs to understand the theory data cycle. This is why psychology majors are typically required to take research methods and statistics courses. The word behavior in the definition refers to observable actions. In other words, behaviors are what we can see other people do. The word mind is a little bit vague. The mind includes both affect and cognition. Affect, yep, I'm pronouncing that correctly, refers to the experience of feelings and emotion. And cognition refers to perceiving, thinking, imagining, remembering, problem solving. To make it easier, you could say psychology is the scientific study of the ABCs, affect, behavior, and cognition. The ABCs appear in every psychology course. For example, affect, behavior, and cognition appear in courses as diverse as biological psychology, human development, social psychology, theories of personality, cognitive psychology, learning and memory, and abnormal psychology. As interesting as psychology course titles are, course titles don't actually convey how fascinating psychology really is. One of the reasons psychology is fascinating is because psychology is everywhere, which, as you might recall, is my second reason for majoring in psychology. One of the best ways I can think of to show you the breadth and applications of psychology is by sending you to two fantastic websites. These websites are easy to remember, but I encourage you to put me on pause to write them down or to bookmark them because I really don't mind waiting. Okay, you ready? One website is APA.org. APA.org is the website for the American Psychological Association, or APA. The other website is psychologicalscience.org. Psychologicalscience.org is the website for the Association for Psychological Science, or APS. When you visit the APA website, scroll to the bottom of the page and select the divisions link, or you could use the URL www.apa.org slash about slash division. You'll see a view all divisions button that when clicked will reveal a list of 54 divisions that represent subdisciplines and topical areas in psychology. Some division names probably won't surprise you. For example, Division 7, Developmental Psychology, Division 8, the Society for Personality and Social Psychology, Division 12, the Society of Clinical Psychology, Division 17, the Society of Counseling Psychology. But other divisions are probably going to surprise you. For example, Division 19, the Society for Military Psychology, Division 23, the Society for Consumer Psychology. Division 34, the Society for Environmental Population and Conservation Psychology. Division 41, the American Psychology Law Society. I had to stop myself at four examples of divisions that might surprise you. There are so many on that list. I really encourage you to go and look at that list. But I want you to go beyond the names of the divisions. The real fun is when you click the division names and you get to go directly to each division's website. The division websites include information about journals, 
recent research findings, conferences, and applications of division-related knowledge. Both the APA and APS websites include a lot of interesting content. Both organizations also have magazines that you can access through the websites. Unlike journals, which are written for a scientific audience, these magazines are written for a general audience and include organization news and articles about recent research findings. The APA magazine is called The Monitor on Psychology. You can navigate to the Monitor page by clicking the Publications and Databases tab at the top of any APA.org webpage or by typing in the URL www.apa.org slash monitor slash index. Sample topics and titles from the monitor include Fostering and Sustaining Peace, Real Treatments in Virtual Worlds, Patient-Centered Pain Management, The Healing Power of Heritage. I had, again, stop at four. There are so many great titles out there. I want to just keep reading all of them to you. The APS magazine is called The Observer. You can navigate to The Observer by clicking the Observer Magazine tab at the top of any APS webpage. The URL is www.psychologicalscience.org slash observer. Sample topics from The Observer include keeping up with the crowd, how different species move as groups, the geometry of thought, how we connect places, memories, and ideas, adventures in the study of attraction, and how sound becomes music. Oh, it's just so hard to stop at just four examples for you. So as you can see, psychology is everywhere. Psychology is also in just about every job, which, as you might recall, is my third reason for majoring in psychology. Employers value the knowledge and skills developed through the psychology major. So let's go back to the fact that many people erroneously assume psychology majors will become psychologists. What's Worse is when people judge people who majored in psychology and didn't go on to become psychologists. And what's the worst of all is when people who majored in psychology and don't become psychologists are told they wasted their bachelor's degree. No, wait. What's worst of all is when people who majored in psychology think they wasted their bachelor's degrees because they didn't become psychologists. So when I hear this, I take a deep breath. And I silently repeat the mantra, this is a great opportunity to share the wonders of psychology again. By the third deep breath and the third time I repeat my mantra, I am sincerely excited to share the wonders of psychology with a new person. But I won't lie, each time I hear someone make a statement about psychology and careers and devaluing the psychology major, it, it makes me wince a little bit. Huh? It feels like a punch in the gut. So think about the assumed major career connection this way. If psychology majors are supposed to be psychologists, are sociology majors expected to be sociologists? Are all history majors expected to be historians? Are all philosophy majors expected to be philosophers? Are all English majors expected to be Englishists? Englishians? Englishers? The point is that that ist, ian, er view of majors becoming careers is overly simplistic and really, honestly, unrealistic. A bachelor's degree, regardless of major, should prepare people for careers, but most undergraduate majors are designed to provide students with the transferable knowledge and skills to be successful in a variety of careers not just one. By transferable knowledge and skills, I mean knowledge and skills that can transfer or are important can be used across career options. There's a great document for psychology majors that describes the skills employers value. It's called The Skillful Psychology Student Prepared for Success in the 21st Century Workplace. This document is the product of an APA working group that set out to identify the skills most valued by employers across occupations. 
And as it turns out, the skills developed through the psychology major are exactly what employers value. The easiest way to access the Skillful Psychology student document is to search the title through your favorite web browser. Again, it's called The Skillful Psychology Student, Prepared for Success in the 21st Century Workplace. You're listening to Psych Everywhere. After this short intermission, Dr. Spencer will tell you about skills that psychology majors have, skills that employers will appreciate, and she also has some great tips to help you find job opportunities online that are suited for your bachelor's degree in psychology. But first, real quick, let me tell you a bit more about Dr. Spencer. Stacy M. Spencer, PhD, is a professor of psychology and the director of the Bachelors in Health Psychology program at MCPHS University, formerly the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. She received her BA from Allegheny College and her MA and PhD from Northeastern University. Dr. Spencer designed and teaches a series of career exploration and professional development courses and conducts research on problem-focused learning and interprofessional education. So now we're back to my point that people who major in psychology develop the knowledge and skills employers value, employers of all types, not just employers who hire mental health professionals. Employer valued skills fall into five domains. There's a cognitive domain, communication domain, personal domain, social domain, and technological domain. The cognitive domain includes analytical thinking, critical thinking, creativity, information management, judgment, and decision making. The communication domain includes oral and written communication. The personal domain includes adaptability, integrity, and self-regulation. The social domain includes collaboration, inclusivity, leadership, management, and service orientation. The technological domain includes flexibility, adaptability to new systems and familiarity with hardware and software. Some people think of these skills as soft skills. I mean, I don't know what's soft, what's soft about these skills. I prefer to call all of these skills transferable skills. But let's go back and think about these. In terms of these different domains, psychology courses include activities, assignments, and content related to all of these different skills. A cognitive psychology course teaches content related to the cognitive domain, but also psychology majors develop these cognitive skills. Psychology courses include activities and assignments that involve oral and written communication. Psychology courses include information and opportunities to develop uh, adaptability, integrity, self-regulation, Students in psychology learn about the social skills like collaboration, inclusivity, leadership, management, and service orientation, and also develop those skills. And in terms of technology, well, you're using lots of different forms of technology across the psychology major. To be fair, psychology isn't the only major through which you can develop cognitive, communication, personal, social, and technological skills. But here is one of the most important points I'm going to make in this podcast. Are you ready? Are you sure? This is a big one. What makes the psychology major different from all other majors is that psychology students don't just develop the skills employers value, they know the concepts that support those skills. And I already gave you some examples, but I'm going to give you a few more. So again, what makes psychology different from other majors is that psychology students don't just develop the skills employers value, they actually know something about the concepts related to those skills. So for example, a person who graduates with a bachelor's degree in psychology can not only demonstrate excellent critical thinking and decision making, they can also identify environmental, motivational, and communication factors that enhance and interfere with good critical thinking and decision making. Now, wouldn't you wanna hire the person who has the skills and can help create an environment in which others are able to think critically and make good decisions? 
give you another example. A person who graduates with a bachelor's degree in psychology has excellent collaborative teamwork skills and can explain group processes, systems issues, and leadership qualities that contribute to successful teamwork. Again, wouldn't you hire the person who has the teamwork skills and the knowledge needed to create successful teams? If you've already taken a psychology course or two or more, I have a challenge for you. I want you to pick your favorite topic in psychology and think about how the concepts related to that topic provide knowledge associated with the skills employers value. So if you've already taken a cognitive psychology course, a social psychology course, and or theories of personality, you might have noticed the examples I just gave included concepts from those courses. So I challenge you to do that yourself. Pick your favorite topic in psychology and think about how that topic is related to one or more of the skills employers value. Now, this podcast is supposed to answer the question, why major in psychology? But I don't think that's the real question. I think the real question is, what will I do with my psychology degree? If you have an interest in working in the field of mental health, then the answer is easy. You can work in mental health with a bachelor's degree and or go to graduate school to become a psychologist, a licensed mental health counselor or a licensed professional counselor, a marriage and family therapist. You could go into clinical social work, become a school psychologist, a psychiatric nurse practitioner, a psychiatric physician assistant, a psychiatrist. A psychology major will provide an excellent foundation for a career in mental health. But as I've told you, this field of psychology is more than mental health. And many psychology majors are interested in topics that are not related to mental health. I've told you employers value the knowledge and skills the psychology major provides, but I still haven't told you everything you can do with your degree. And that's because, here it is again, psychology is everywhere. I can't provide a list of all the occupations that a psychology major might consider in this podcast, because that would take too long. But there are lists you can access. For example, Eric Landrum published a list of bachelor level occupations in the January 2018 edition of the APA Psychology Student Network newsletter. Drew Appleby published a resource with 300 occupational titles for bachelor's, master's, and doctor level careers on the teachpsych.org website. So again, you can look up Eric Landrum's list in the APA Psychology Student Network newsletter, or Drew Appleby's list of resources on the teachpsych.org website. Now, not only would it be too long of a list for me to give you all the possible occupations that you can pursue with a bachelor's degree in psychology, the other reason I won't run through a list of occupational titles It's because occupational titles don't tell you the whole story about jobs you can get with a bachelor's degree in psychology. Why is that? 300 occupations don't tell the whole story? (laughs) The reason is because occupational titles are often job titles. But most job titles are not occupational titles. Let me say that again. Occupational titles are often job titles, but most job titles are not occupational titles. Let me give you some examples of occupational titles. Teacher, firefighter, chef, psychologist. When a job opening is posted for one of these occupations, the job title is most likely going to be teacher, firefighter, chef, psychologist. That's why I said occupational titles are often job titles. Now let me give you some examples of common job titles. Administrative assistant, project coordinator, volunteer coordinator, research assistant, site coordinator, mental health associate. These are job titles, but they aren't all occupational titles. Employers get to decide what to call a job. To make things even more interesting, the same job titles are used differently by different employers. So for example, an administrative assistant for one employer might answer phones and manage someone's schedule whereas an administrative assistant for another employer might assist in an administrator in collecting information, making decisions, preparing reports, and delivering reports. Same job titles, very different responsibilities. 
Now let me give you some examples of less common job titles for real jobs that are really cool. Each of these jobs require the knowledge and skills gained through the psychology major. Let's start with the first one, network research trainee. That job title doesn't really tell you anything, but here's what's really cool about it. The network research trainee prepares and analyzes and distributes TV ratings. They assist in preparing reports to support program scheduling and advertising scale sales. They get to actually work with the people who are deciding what shows up on television. How is that related to psychology? Psychology majors learn how to work with data. We talked about research methods and statistics courses. Those courses are really, really handy. The question being answered may not be about something you think is specifically psychology, but it kind of is. It's the behavior around watching television. What are people watching on television and how can we use the data to make important scheduling decisions? Here's another one, health IT consultant. The health IT consultant identifies issues and designs solutions for healthcare application users. They also consult with users and create site-specific data report formats. And what does that mean? This person goes in and they help individuals work with applications. They make sure the apps that are designed to manage healthcare information actually make sense to the person who's going to use the app. And then they help maximize the success of that app for those individuals by creating data reports in formats that work for that particular institution or health setting. And what does that have to do with psychology? Well, again, a person in psychology is going to understand something about information and how we might organize information. They also know something about people. And by knowing something about people, they understand how people might interact with technology. You, know, you might say, why not major in computer science? But the computer science major doesn't know about people. They know about programming. So this is where the psychology student bachelor degree individual can be really, really valuable. Here's another one, public defender investigator. Yes, with a bachelor's degree, you could get a job locating and interviewing witnesses, investigating and photographing crime scenes, reviewing and analyzing police reports, preparing and presenting oral and written reports. So for all the psychology majors who are fascinated by the television shows, where we're trying to figure out who did what? This is kind of doing that, collecting that evidence and trying to make sense of a situation that happened in a way that would be used to um, defend someone who's been accused of a crime. What are the skills? Being able to communicate with individuals, being able to ask really good questions, being able to look at evidence and pull that evidence together into a report that makes sense. The last one I'm going to talk about is a game story editor. The game story editor adapts popular fiction stories into interactive stories. They use creative writing and editing to create emotional connections. Well, affect, as strange as it may sound the way we pronounce it, affect is about emotions. Through, through the psychology major, students are learning about affect and emotion, and emotional connections, and then turning that that knowledge into really good interactive stories that engage someone through a game. So I have another challenge for you. This challenge is to spend a couple of hours searching for jobs. A couple of hours? Yes, two hours specifically. You don't have to spend two consecutive hours, but I challenge you to spend two hours reviewing job descriptions. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pick a job search engine. There are a lot of them out there. You may have heard of Indeed.com, Monster.com, CareerBuilder.com, Glassdoor.com, SimplyHired.com, any one of those, pick your favorite. Then I want you to pick a location, you know, a city where you might work. And then in the search box, I want you to type the word bachelors. Don't type BA, not BS, and definitely not psychology because those terms are gonna limit your search. Employers often don't list college majors in their job postings. So you're just gonna use the word bachelors and 
then I'm going to have you scroll through the results. Scroll through the postings until you find three jobs that interest you. Three jobs you'd be eligible for with your bachelor's degree and no professional licensure. You can keep any job that requires certification as long as the certification doesn't require another degree. For example, a job might require CPR training, cardiopulmonary resuscitation training. Now we can get CPR training in just a few hours from a certified agency in your community. So those kinds of jobs are okay, but something that requires a license, um, like nursing, you don't, you don't want to select those for this purpose. Doesn't mean nursing isn't an interesting career, just not going to be for our purpose. All right, so why two hours? because I want you to read a lot of job descriptions. Job search sites typically list job titles and you have to click the titles to read the job details. Please don't skip over any titles unless you know for a fact that licensure is necessary. So we can use nursing again as an example. You can skip over the nursing jobs because you won't have the licensure with a bachelor's degree in psychology to pursue that. But all the other bachelor's jobs, I really want you to read and that's going to take time. Through this challenge you will discover that employers rarely list specific majors in their job postings. I mean unless of course you're selecting mental health related jobs those list psychology as a major that would be beneficial but most other jobs don't list specific majors as qualifications or expectations for the job. Through this challenge you're going to find out I wasn't lying about the knowledge and skills thing. Employers really do care about cognitive, communication, personal, social, and technological skills. And through this challenge, you're going to find out that there are interesting jobs out there that you can start preparing for now. You can start picking courses to build the knowledge related to those occupations or those jobs. You can start um, looking for volunteer and internship opportunities to gain related experience. In fact, you could even contact an employer for a job that you're not ready to apply for to find out if they have any volunteer or internship opportunities to help you gain related knowledge and skills. So some of those jobs that you will find in my challenge might actually turn into a great uh, experience building opportunity for you, even if you're not officially applying for the job that was posted. So there it is, my answer to the question, why major in psychology is, because psychology is fascinating, because psychology is everywhere, and because psychology provides you with the knowledge and skills employers value. I'd like to end this podcast by telling you one of my favorite terms, psychological literacy. Psychological literacy is the ability to apply the knowledge and skills gained through psychology to answer everyday questions and to solve real world problems. The undergraduate psychology degree provides psychological literacy. With a bachelor's degree in psychology, you get to decide the questions you want to answer and the problems you want to solve. And what is more awesome than that? You've just listened to another episode of the Psych Everywhere podcast. Special thanks to Dr. Spencer for recording this episode and for all she does to help students and others to explore the many applications of a bachelor's degree in psychology. If you'd like to learn more from Dr. Spencer, I encourage you to check out her magazine article in Ion Psychi. That article is called Pride of Ownership, Do You Recognize the Value of Your Bachelor's Degree in Psychology? It was published in the Fall 2017 issue and can be accessed at psychi.com backslash I Fall 17 Spencer. Dr. Spencer also released a more recent article with us in the Spring 2020 issue. That one's called Effective Cover Letters and Resumes the importance of fit before format. That one can be found at psychi.com backslash I spring 20 Spencer. Last but not least, you know the drill. If you liked the episode, be sure to leave a review at Apple Podcast. And just as importantly, share this episode with your psychology professors. I think the information that Dr. Spencer provided could be extremely useful in your classrooms. Okay, thanks again for listening to the show. That's all for now. I'll talk to you again soon.
Copyright 2020. Psychi, the International Honor Society in Psychology. All rights reserved.